I'd like to take this opportunity to cast a light on what women's experiences are in particular. And that's often because we have a very stereotypical approach to them, or there's a lot of silencing around it. Now, I want to highlight three key issues. The first is, of course, violence including physical and sexual violence and the greater vulnerability that women and girls face to such violence at this time because of such things as increased economic insecurity, joblessness, and of course, confinement. I'd like to also keep in mind that there are groups of women and girls, such as disabled women and girls that are always at greater risk and remain at greater risk at this time. And I want to emphasize the issue of violence, although it seems that it's being discussed and highlighted by so many groups across the region, including state actors, because the state response to it remains inadequate in many ways. And so even while we're hearing about it, we have to hold the state accountable for the fact that such extra, um, that this uh, increased vulnerability to violence exists and that a response is being crafted around that. I'd secondly like to point to the uh, vulnerability to child sexual abuse that exists. Um, girls are much more vulnerable to child sexual abuse and incest, but so are boys. And so this is an issue that's affecting children. We know that the rates of child sexual abuse are very high in the region, from Jamaica to Trinidad and Tobago to Guyana to the Bahamas. And so when we think about child sexual abuse and incest, I want to highlight that as a really as one of the issues that continues to disturb me. Often, in a sense, because our governments have never had an adequate preventative strategy around child sexual abuse and incest, and I think it is even more important at this time. One of the other issues that I think is, um, I think, worrying me significantly is the issue of food, not just food sovereignty, the way people have been talking about it as an agricultural issue or as um, an issue of us being able to feed ourselves as Caribbean nations instead of being so export dependent. I'm talking about the ability to put food on the table. I'm talking about the nutrition of children. I'm talking about girls vulnerability to transactional sex in order to be able to eat. And so the other issue that worries me is the question of food. And finally, you know, we are going to be hearing a lot about the economy during this time, but we're not going to be hearing enough about the care economy. That is who is taking care of children, the aged, the ill, whether in the public sphere in terms of um, workers such as nurses or in the private sphere at the home. And as we think about recovery, all the Caribbean countries are now opening back up their economies, even while schools remain closed around the region. And we have to ask ourselves, who is looking after those children? And in any economic recovery, question the assumptions we're making about the care economy, the burden it puts on women, and the risks to which it exposes children.